Hey, do you need wallpaper? Go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Give them my name, tell them Spencer Colgan sent you, and they'll be sure to give you 10% off at checkout. Check it out, tell them I said hello. They have a tremendous selection. Don't shop anywhere else until you've checked out www.wallpaperboulevard.com. So you're afraid or you're worried about trimming your wallpaper because it's very expensive and you want to get a perfectly straight cut, right? So I went to the end of the video and I want to show you what we accomplished throughout this video. I'm going to put it, the finished product in the beginning so that I grab most of your attention throughout the video. I hope you watch the whole thing. How did we do this? I feel like I'm on an elevator, right? How do we do it? Stay tuned in this video and you'll figure it out and we'll do it together. How's that? Hi, it's Spencer Colgan, and welcome back to my YouTube channel on wallpaper and painting. Today we're doing a bathroom. And in particular, we're doing these box cutouts. Uh, sometimes people like to wallpaper bookshelves and entertainment centers in which you find a lot of these these uncovered areas to keep things on like toiletries etc or in the entertainment center remote controls little vases flowers etc they really accent the area nicely but as you can see this is perhaps a a, ch a confusing, confusing or challenging uh, task. Where do you start? So in this video, I'm going to show you. And I think if you didn't have any idea and you didn't watch this video, it's really just common sense. You would start here and bring your wallpaper into here. And wherever it ends, you continue it around. It's a pain, but it's really just you figuring out. It's a lot of cutting, but it's just figuring out where the wallpaper continues and then around. And then the trick would be, of course, to come back out and continue the wallpaper out onto here. It, we're, depending on where you start. If you start here, you're going to be bringing it out over to here. But it's really no difference. And so let's get into it. And this way you can see what I'm talking about. To make this possible and easy on us, we need to think about where the end of the first sheet will fall. Now, if we start over here, or if we start over here, the issue is the same. So let's choose a side. If I put my, I'm just simulating a tape measure here by actually using the width of the wall covering. If I wind up right here, then I have to continue it here. It's not a terrible idea, but I would rather be here with just less than a quarter of an inch. These corners are not 90 degrees. They're curved. You know, when people finish these boxes off, they're not working with full arm extensions. It's a challenging thing. And so we know that these are not 90. If you look in the middle, you can see curvature there. You see that? So even if we went with a quarter of an inch, we'd be safe. Okay. You don't want to put patterns in here with flowers that connect with little stems because you'll see that it's off. So you want to choose something as busy as this, and I'll show you the pattern when we get started here. So if, I, if my pattern, my sheet ends here and starts over here, let's see how I wind up with that. 
I like where I'm left. I'm left in the middle of this. I can get my hand in here. It's not too difficult. And then all I have to do is come out here and I'll have extra and I'll have to trim it off. Okay, I like, I like the setup. The wall covering is 27 inches wide and it just happens to be that my box is cooperating with, with the ease of the installation. But let's say I had a 20 and a half inch. I'll come out to here, end up about right here. That becomes a pain, you know? What I might do in that case is start here and come out 20 and a half inches, right? And then deal with this coming over here. I might do that. The whole issue is, can you get your two hands in here and work? And so the sheet that starts out here into the box is governed by, in my opinion, the principle of ease, of handling the connection between the first sheet that you bring into the box and the second sheet. You don't want it here. You don't want that. You want it somewhere. I usually say four to six inches, but in this case, I'm going to say eight inches because it's... You, this span is not big enough to fit my two arms in here and work. So it's going to slow me down. So that would be the consideration. So I'll bring you up close and show you what we did. Okay, so now here's, here's where the box starts, right here. Okay, now since I have to cut the box along the top edge, this piece will not be able to continue into the box because I'm cutting it. So this paper will only be used to go into the wall of the box. So this is important now. You wanna find the edge and cut to the, 
to the other side of it so you have ample for a splice okay and I don't want to go beyond the top of the box because the paper has to go into the box to be used on the wall you'll see what I mean oh okay so here's what I'm gonna do Spencer, why are you wasting this paper? I'm not. I'm not wasting any paper. Now look, look what I do here. Here's the corner of my box. Why did I cut it that way? Anybody? Does anybody realize why? Now which way would I cut this? Uh, if I cut this way, I just want it off of that corner. And I don't want to take any away, so we're going to go this way. We want to get the tension off so the paper bends into the inside. Okay, now do you see? Now do you see why I cut it that way? Nice and easy. This happens to be high quality paper. High quality stuff. Now, you're the pro, okay? Or you're even the homeowner. If your paper starts ripping here, here's what I want you to do. Take the rest of the day off. Because you're in for it. You're in for it. If you try to install a uh, wall covering that's cheap, um, forget it, forget it. It's never gonna survive here. Oh. Okay, all right, you see what I did. We'll go on the next frame when I get something good. So this, this bend here, I've, I've bent all of the paper into that box, so this one, and the angle, is creating a wrinkle or what's called I'm going to call it angular tension here's why wallpaper is designed to bend around objects but like picture for the purposes of this segment of the video trying to wallpaper a basketball just picture that in some areas, it would be perfectly flat, right? And then obviously at the top and bottom, it would look like a, um, corn in its uh, whatever you call that thing, that green thing. Can't think of it. But you understand, so we don't have this going on. We have this and then a, one of these around. So it creates tension, and I just pulled it off and and got it back on. So the, the reason I explain this is if it happens to you, take the wall covering off. Do you see this roundness here? See? Now, if it were evenly rounded in its radius here and here, which you can see, see how sharp it is here? See, a lot of people don't know how to articulate this and they wind up getting in trouble with homeowners. Not that I'm so great and you know, no. But I've been challenged by people, and I had to study it, and I figured it out. Do you see the 90 here? You see how sharp this corner is? See that? It's eight inches up. See the roundness here? Okay. And see the roundness here. I'm sure you can see it. Well, guess what? That's going to create an angular, tense... Uh, situation. Let me take this call, please.
Okay. So you understand. And listen, some people say, oh, you sound condescending. Um, if I do, I don't mean to be. Okay, we got round there. Now, if you are severely overweight, you know Bert and Ernie from Sesame Street? You see how Ernie wears the striped shirt going around? So those stripes can't remain perfectly level, right? Because if his stomach comes out, or if a person who's very overweight comes out, the, the levelness is distorted by the different levels of volume, flesh, that the shirt has to cover, which, which throws off the line of the level. In the same manner, this variation of angle round up here and sharp there will not only distort the pattern if we had a flower here, a flower here, a flower here, the same flower. Let's say the repeat was every three inches. Well, you'd have the flower here, then it would be here, then it would be here, because the angle would throw off the, the thing, right? And so, fortunately, this is so busy that even though our angle is going to be off, we're not worried about it. And that's why when we get on the inside corner, we cut it and make this piece level again. But I will likely eliminate it because I think... Uh, you ever hear of um, literary license or whatever they call it? The poet takes, you know, liberty. And so the artist takes liberty too, and as long as it looks good. Alrighty? So I didn't have as many issues down here as I did up there. I'm not going to make this video too long. Oh, check this out. Look at this. Now, no, no, this is good to show you. Watch this. <clears throat> you see how sharp the right angle is here? Right angle is a straight line here and one immediately perpendicular and it forms a 90, okay? Look, watch this. What's going on here? It's exactly what I told you about, Ernie and the shirt. It's tight here. He's slim here, but he's fat up here and the shirt's hanging off of him. That's what's going on. So, careful before you go on to the next sheet. You got to get this tight. I'm going to pull this off, put paste here again, because the wall covering has relaxed after it was, was wet with the paste, and now it's, it's revealing a fat corner. We can't have that, so we got to fix that. So, let me share with you what I did in order to fix this. I just loaded it up with glue. You know why? I want the glue to occupy the airspace that results from the corner angle changing. Like, you know when somebody changes their mind on you and you're left out in the cold? Well, the angle changed its mind on the wallpaper and left it with a fat corner because it changed its shape. I'm just trying to use language that you're going to say, oh, I know what he means. I'm not being condescending. See, see all the paste up there? Look at this watch. Now, now that's all filled in here. Okay. The last box on the bottom has the best tight corner. And as you can see, this is the cleanest sheet without any issues, you know? Now what we're going to do is install the wall covering one sheet at a time from here down into there. We're not going to continue it on the back. No, no, no. Then we're going to do the same with this. So that'll be one sheet into there. This sheet necessarily will be starting in the back there in the back, come all the way over here, wrap around here, and go right into there. You can't have a sheet of wallpaper 
wrapping around all these corners. So it would be one, two, and then three, four. You, no, we're going to interrupt it back there. Okay, so let's get to it. The reason why I have my flanges up is because if this should get stuck on here, no good. We need this because we're going to put a piece of wall covering over this to match it. And then we're going to cut it right, we're going to splice it right there. Same thing with that, right there. Okay, that's what makes this thing so difficult. Okay. Okay, now over the top of the, the, of the first box, we have to put the sheet right over the pattern. It has to match. Look, see this little piece of the pattern? Watch. See, it has to be right over it. And if it's not, it's not going to look right. Okay, you understand? Because we're going to be cutting it, remember? Where are we? We're going to be cutting it here. Right, right at the right of... So we have to get our laser and we have to make it a straight line coming right down to the corner. So our flange, remember the flange underneath it? It's overlapped to give us a nice amount of, you know, wall covering so we can have a piece. You don't want to cut it too short. We're going to splice it, so you have to have some overlap to splice through. Okay. So I made a little cut line at the corner. See the box in there? This is the top of the box. So I've taken the tension off of that, that area. Now all I have to do is cut a straight line down, okay, through this pattern. Okay, so I made my straight line right over the corner. Let me remove this to show you what I'm talking about because it may be confusing. Wow. Wow. Whew. Okay, let me clean that up. So now we're lifting up our, our sheet and removing the underlap through which we spliced, remember? The piece I'm removing belonged to the first piece. Look. Nice and easy. You don't want to knock these lines out of joint. Okay. Now let's clean this up and match it up. Okay, it was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. And so now, I'm going to gently push this piece through and it's going to become the ceiling of the box inside. Okay? Do you like that? Yeah. We put a couple of trees in there. Now, keeping in mind, we want to keep this corner tight. I'm going to manipulate the paper around that corner so we can keep it tight. See that nice sharpness? With my fingers now, literally. We don't want to push this wall covering in too rough. I'm just pushing my fingers against it so that I don't blow any of the corners. Once you blow a corner, you got a hole in the corner. If you use a tool, you're liable to put a hole in it. So now just gently. And so we want to clean it off. Why, why am I cleaning it off? Well, if there's paste on it, my hand may catch on it and go put a hole right through it. Okay. Okay. Let me just say something about the corners, okay? Tricky. When you're looking up from below, these corners should be cut with this wallpaper underneath this sheet so that when you're looking up, you can't see the edge of this wallpaper that would come right there. And so this wallpaper definitely comes right there. It passes the corner about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Remember, our corners are wavy, so you might even want to go a half an inch, depending. But if you go too far, 
you're gonna see the ridge underneath it. So this is, gets very tricky. But what I'm saying is this piece comes all the way over to the corner and then passes the corner and comes down and gets tucked underneath this piece. So that you'd have to be, you, you wouldn't be able to see the edge of this sheet because you can never get your head in there. Common sense, right? And so keep that in mind, all the corners will be determined which goes under and which goes over by that principle. You don't wanna see the edge of any of it. Now here's something I bet you didn't consider. What wallpaper goes in here and here? Who says right now, just by looking at this, that I can run one sheet here to here to here, and maybe even to there as well? And I'll give you this. I'll even cut them in the corner. I'll cut it here. Obviously, that'll be cut. If I cut this sheet here, then continue it out to here, and then put it in there. Who says I can do that? I'll bet a lot of people said you can do it, but you can't because here's what's going on. We have two competing runs. The wallpaper that goes on the facade isn't running at the same speed at which the wall covering on the side is running. And so what meets here is not going to meet here. You see how that works? You may think that it's, if you ran a sheet here, it's going to meet with this. Sure, it'll meet with this. You'd, you'd make it meet with that. But that doesn't mean that the, the top of this is going to meet with the bottom of this. But guess what? You're not going to see that with this wallpaper. But just know that the governing principle on what to put here and here is determined by two things. What's here has to match this. And what's here has to match this. This doesn't have to match with this. You're never gonna see it. So here's what we're doing. We're gonna run a sheet that matches with this. Here and here. And we're going to continue it so that you can't tell that these pieces on the facade do not run with this and this and this. Gets tricky. So, what we're going to do is run our wallpaper. Th these squares are not even, th these are not running perfectly parallel. See this? And so if I took my tape measure and measured here, you'd get 20 and a quarter, 21 and a quarter, 22. Okay, so it becomes something of like a, a, a real, like a, a labor of love because there is a concession here that it's not going to match, but we're going to make it because we're going to treat the facade first, the facade, the face of it. And after we treat the facade, we're going to take advantage of all of these interruptions. This corner here, that one there, that one there, to break the pattern. And when the stuff is put in here, like toilet paper, and 
you're never going to see the point at which this meets that. Okay, I'm going to get started on it. I'm going to now look for my sheet that comes all the way down and make my connections here. So I put my second sheet over the one that came to the end here. There's nothing under this, but as you know, we have the wallpaper under this from this sheet. The reason I chose to do that is so that I can take this flap now and fill the walls on the insides of these boxes. Okay, so let me paste and pat down this whole sheet to the side. So I put my sheet over it and I'm going to use most of this wallpaper to put this paper inside of the left walls in the boxes but I still have to connect it here and I have to connect it on all of the pieces of the facade. Not easy. Okay, this demanding pattern is not allowing me to proceed as I planned. So here's plan B. I'm going to splice each horizontal facade, that is the pieces that go this way. And I have enough of these gold things to go around in order to hide my splice. Okay, it, the, the boxes are too off in order to expect the pattern to meet up. So this is what I'm going to do. You see how I've met up the pattern here? I'm going to cut it along this gold thing so I can, I can hide this. and give myself a little lip so I can connect these and do a splice underneath. But this is the best I can do right now with this pattern. Okay, I'll show you what was happening. This side is longer than this side. You see this buckle here? I don't have enough length here. The square is off. So, you know, that's why I took into account that this was going to take me a full day, this thing. Since I'm not going, I, I can't expect it to meet up here. Even though it looks like it does, right? It looks it. But look here. No, no, we're not taking chances here. So we're going to trim this. We know our flange comes out to about here. Let's check it out, make sure. Because we want to be cutting into wallpaper, okay? So I'm going to cut along these. I'm going to use these lines to my advantage in this pattern, okay? And I suggest you do too. Even though it looks like it matches up here, I don't trust it. it there's a hundred lines here. If <laughs> one of them is off, you're going to see it, okay? So I'm gonna go along the gold. Okay, this is, this is an awesome challenge. It really is an awesome challenge doing this. Okay. Okay, let's see how I did. So I cut through using the gold. And you see this cluster of white here? I try to take advantage of where the white lines converge so that I can hide my overlap in those white lines so that I wouldn't be cutting it here and then you get a white line like dying into gray, you know. So let's see how I did. Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm playing it by ear here. This is, this is, I'm just making this up as I go along. What else can I do, you know? Okay. 
let's not claim victory yet. Oh, this is a real nail biter. It really is. Careful here. Okay. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. I think we're good. I think we're good. I th oh man, that's amazing. Do you see how I use the lines lock? I want to pull it away. Oh. Trust me, I went through this line. But do you see how I took advantage of the, the white line issue? When you're cutting through a pattern and you're in a desperate situation, go with the natural lines. The eyes will never catch it. Okay, and I think it's best that you don't tell the homeowner. Here's why. Some of us literally are what they call OCD. We'll look at it over and over and over, looking for it until we find it. But I'm going to tell you what, what the passing grade is. When your homeowner comes in sober... And he looks at it, or she looks at it, and they say, great job. And they really looked at it. You got an A+. Plus. That's an A+. Plus. Okay? Don't be too hard on yourself, even though this came out perfect. Don't be hard on yourself, because this is not easy. If, if you can get this to look like it belongs... Or, or when you step away and you're not up close like this, and this, this looks perfect here, I think you would agree. But if you're four or five feet away and it looks like, it, you did good. You did good. Okay, we're no, by, by no means are we through the woods. So now we're dealing with a splice every box, okay? Not what I signed up for, but what can you do? All right, so we began our second splice earlier in the video up here, right? You see this? Because this didn't meet up. Now, to blend this in better, I'm going to spray it with water. Then I'm going to mash it just easily. We want to let that water get in at that seam and work on it to soften it to make it look like there's no seam. and see how it looks. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Let that dry, don't touch it. What do you think? Okay, we are coming along here. Woof. Now let's not forget about the piece we had up here, right? So, this piece was the piece we put on in order to get this. And we were supposed to get that, but it didn't work out. So now, we're going to leave that sheet up. We just put that together. And we're going to get rid of this one. We're going to do it the same exact way. Okay? We're going to cut through this. We want to make sure that we're right over the pattern in order to do that correctly. Best way to do that is make it as flat as you can. Okay, we're going to take advantage of those lines in the pattern. Okay. Now, I wish this gold piece... We're closer to our corner, but it's not. 
Actually, actually, here's where we're gonna. Mm, I could come down here. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? I feel like Bob Ross. Tell you what. Okay. Hmm. See, we don't want to cut across these white lines. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put you down and then I'm going to peel this off and follow the gold line so I'm hitting it underneath it. I need two hands for that. It just happened to be that our pattern was right on. So what are we going to do here? Okay. Okay. I need to cut this off. So I decided to go this way out to the end. Now, this could put me at a problem with the next sheet coming up here, okay? It could cause an issue. But hey, at this point, I got no choice. I have no choice. Believe me, when I get home today, I think I'm gonna crack open a nice root beer. Do you like root beer too? When you had a rough day. I like root beer. I don't want to get cocky now. We still have... <laughs> we got this piece. And let me tell you something. It could make the whole thing look horrible. Okay. <clears throat> You judge for yourself. Now, as I'm showing you this box, I have to tell you that I employed a technique demonstrated by Phil Beckwith on his videos. I'm not going to tell you where, because your job is to find that it's either perfect or not. My job is to show you that we can do this. We can do it. Okay. Match it up here, and we're just going to splice it, okay? Okay, so I put the sheet on here, trimmed it over here, trimmed it over here, and then in the back, and then I have to contend with the splice. So let's try to do that. So, a fellow named Phil Beckwith actually taught me what I just did here. What you saw in the last frame was my attempt to splice it. But I didn't have enough meat on the flap going over, so I employed a technique demonstrated by Phil Beckwith on his channel. And... Um, I've been waiting to use it. It's an excellent technique where he takes wallpaper that's on a corner and he overlaps it just by about three sixteenths. I also saw Aubrey do it. Then he brings the next sheet. And you can't do it all types of wallpaper. It's got to be high quality stuff. and It's got to be thin, thin enough to do it. And then he overlaps the wallpaper 
I, I can't get into the technique. I didn't record it while I was doing it, but Phil will be glad to show you how he does it, I'm sure. Now we have to do the same agonizing procedure for this one as we did here. Okay. Okay. Just splice this. This success was pure luck. Pure luck. I just happened to get it to match up. And what you're looking at is the product of pure luck. I did not have to employ the technique of Phil Beckwith. So in this case, I spliced it. But let me tell you something. Oh my gosh, not easy. Still a lot of cleanup to do. How's the luck? I have to admit, I've been at it several hours. Not fun. Okay. So, to complete the boxes, all my ceilings are done in floors. I just have to do this sidewall on the middle box and I'm going to call it a day because I've had it, to be honest. As I suspected before, remember I said I don't know if we're going to be lining up here. Remember when I said I'm going to put this piece on? So, that's how much I'm off too far off to let it go so I cut it here so watch this I think we can make this work look at this so I cut it here because I think I can reconnect these if I just hem it I like to call it a hem it's like hemming a pair of pants that's what we used to do back in the day not everybody had the money to go out and buy new pants you know so we hem them up. Look. See, I think I can make that match again. Because by hemming it, I'm able to reconnect the pattern. What do you think? I'm at the point where I'm pulling out all my techniques using everything because this is not a typical installation, okay? And you got to know how to splice. You got to know how to conserve wallpaper. A lot went into this installation. And I'm, I'm very proud to be able to do this. So for our last piece, which you know is problematic, just in case I'm going to replace the sheet in there, just in case, I might. Let's see if it matches up where... Nah, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm gonna take that piece off. Let's do this real quick. Okay. Take it off. Doesn't match. All right. I feel like I'm on an elevator, right? How do we do it? Stay tuned in this video and you'll figure it out and we'll do it together. How's that?